Hey, let's look at how we formulate the node voltage equations. As I said, the, um, the node voltage equations allows us to uh, solve uh, simultaneous equations in less numbers. Right? Otherwise, you would need to solve uh, maybe two E elements. The E is number of elements, two E number of equations simultaneously. And if we uh, can formulate the node voltage using the node voltages as unknowns, and we only need to solve n, uh, n number of equations if we have n plus one number of the nodes in the circuits. And, and you, some of you may ask questions. We, we already know how to solve the circuits uh, the, using the uh, parallel series or the other things, uh, maybe superposition, um, uh, why we need still need the node voltage analysis and mesh current analysis. This is kind of the nuclear weapon we have. So this is most suitable for dealing with large scale problems like the power grid, right? If you think about power grids, there's thousands, tens of thousands of the nodes, depending on how, what kind of granularity you want to go uh, to solve, to model the system. There are maybe millions of nodes, I don't know. Uh, so in that case, you, you end up with a lot of equations you really need to solve. You want to know every point of the voltage uh, the, the, on the power system, they call the buses. Uh, you, you may need to know voltage, the bus voltages, and you need to, solve, uh, need to solve a lot of equations, right? So this, this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, approach, more general approach, is, is, a suit, is suitable for dealing with these large-scale problems. Okay, so let's see. Um, the uh, let's let's start the three-step process. Assume we kind of starting from scratch, and you you didn't really learn the uh, the no voltage analysis at all in two o one. So we use this three-step process. But once you know this really well, you don't really need the three step. You can write the equation in one step, right? So let's see. We assume. Um, I don't want to confuse anybody. So let's start with the three-step process. The three-step process is you first write the KCL equations. KCL equation, of course, is the, the equation for the currents, right? So you label the currents for each element and um, and you, you write the KCL equations and each node. And this and each node, and I want to put a condition here if there is no voltage source connected to that node. If there is a voltage source connected to that node, you can't really write that KCL equation anymore because you don't really know what that um, current through that voltage source. Could be anything, right? Um, and step two is you write uh, the element constraint equations. And so you basically relate that those currents to the node voltages. Right. The third step is you replace those node, these currents by the node voltage. You kind of reformulate the equations to organize them in a nice format. Let's look at an example here. And uh, here I have a circuit. Uh, so I have this circuit already uh, with the reference, with the node voltage already marked, with the reference node chosen. So this is the reference node. I have the three node voltages. So let's see this node number one, this node number two, and this node number three. I have three nodes, and I would like to know all the node voltages. And this is a circuit I'm trying to solve. Follow the three-step process. At first, I would like to redraw the circuit and have the uh, all the currents through the elements labeled so that I can write that KCL equation on each uh, node. And each node, if there is no node voltage connected to, if there is no voltage sources connected to that node. So in this case, we're gonna write the KCL equation for node one and node number two. So KCL equation for node one and two, and and number two. And in this case, we write the node equation in the uh, in the ways of the leaving currents from non-source elements equal to the uh, the current entering currents from the source uh, currents. Okay, so in this case, we would like to write and node one the sum of 
the sum of the current leaving from the node is I10, I10 plus I12. Those are leaving currents from this um, minus J5, uh, the uh, capacitor impedance and also 10 ohm resistance. That's equal to the uh, anion currents, which is J2, right? And for the second element, for the second node, the uh, leaving currents from the leaving currents from the node from non-source elements that should be equal to the uh, inner currents from the source current. In that case, we don't really have any source currents, so that's going to be equal to zero on the other side of the equation. Uh, this easy one on the uh, on the left side of this equation, the leaving currents. So the leaving current through this 10 ohm resistor, that should be negative I sub 1, 2, right? And that's when we talk about the element constraints, we talk about uh, the, when we talk about connection constraint, we talk about the anion currents and leaving currents. If you're not comfortable with this concept, go back to lecture number two, okay? And it's, and then, then the, uh, through this two ohm resistor, that's the I sub two zero, and from the uh, J3, the inductance impedance, that's the I sub 2, 3. Right, so these are two KCL equations. We can't really write the KCL equation for node number 3 because we don't really, we don't really know the um, currents through this voltage source. So we're going to talk about that later. Um, and so this is the step 1. Right? And step 2. And the step 2 is we write the element constraints, right? So each of the element constraints, I, uh, so let's see, the I sub one, two, that's equal. If I use node there, that should be equal V sub one, zero. We, v sub one, zero over the impedance, right? The impedance with negative J5. We also know the element constraint, the element voltage V sub one, zero is related to the node voltage which is actually is equal V1. V sub zero, we just talk about how the element voltage is related to the node voltages, right? So in this case, this is V1 over next J5. So this is the, we can do this for I sub one, two. So I'm not gonna go through the details. So I sub one, two is gonna be equal uh, V sub one, two divided by 10. Right, so in this case, I would have uh, I would have uh, V1 minus V2 using the node voltages divided by 10, so on and so forth. If I write uh, the I sub 2, 0, I sub 2, 0 is going to be equal to V sub 2 divided by 2, and uh, I 2, 3, and that should be equal V2 minus V3 over J3, so on and so forth. I think that's all the element constraint, right? And the step three, you substitute these currents into the original equations, the KCL equations, right? So you replace this I by this, you replace I sub two by this. So in this case, you will end up with the equation, uh, so, in this case, you will the first case. Uh, the first one you would have V1 over minus J5 plus V1 minus V2 divided by 10. That's equal my equal J2. That's anion currents from the source. And for the as the second node, and we have V2 minus. So in this case, I have negative I12, right? So in this case, I just put negative here, and that becomes V2 minus V1. So V2 minus V1 divided by uh, 10. That's the current leaving from the node number two through the 10 ohm resistor. And the current leaving from the two ohm resistor, that's V2 divided by two, right? And plus the V2 divided by, um, plus V2 minus V3. That's the current leaving from node two through this J3 inductance impedance divided by J3. My dog Rose, she is snoring here. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
and so this is equal to zero. All right, so these are two, and then for the third element, we don't really know what the uh, node voltage equation, so that we need another equation to uh, get. So the for third equation based on the element constraint, and so no v three should be equal just equal twelve, right? So you got these three equations. You can formulate them into um, how to see into the matrix form or not to solve it. I have in the in the nodes. In the Google Colab notes, I have two ways of solving these equations, and one is using the uh, symbolic, um, so use sim pi. That's the the module for uh, for symbolic equations, and you can set up the equations, and you can use the uh, solve function. In that, so in this case, you will get um, you will get the results. So each of these would be uh, would be uh, complex numbers. This uh, in a rectangular form, and this i here is basically that's a j. We have the imaginary, uh, the negative square root, square root of negative one, or you could put them in matrix form in a and b, and you can write this uh, equation. Uh, see matrix form, and that's what I mean. The matrix form, right? So I'm I'm not gonna repeat that. So I I stop there in uh, number three. But if you want to put in matrix form, you can put nice image nice form in matrix, and you can um, like a four, and you can solve the same uh, same equation, and uh, you can you get the same numbers. Okay, you guys, yeah, you get the same same results if you compare uh, these two symbolically, or you can uh, numerically using another. Very commonly used pack uh, module is called NumPy, and that's the one uh, you're gonna use. Okay, I think that will conclude the um, node voltage analysis. If you're not uh, super clear, and get back to some of the lectures and make sure you get this thing understood. Okay, because this is very important.